Okay, so here's the answer. See, when we did linearly squares, right? Okay, uh, of our parameters were A, B, and C. And what does linear mean? In fact, let me bring it out. If you recall in the PowerPoint, uh, it was mentioned that linear means linear in terms of parameters. Okay, like uh, uh, linear in terms of parameters. Not the actual curve we are fitting. The actual curve you were fitting was nonlinear, right? So our model was, remember, ax squared plus bx plus c. So a, you know, it's just by itself. It's not a square. It's not being multiplied with. So that's what we mean by linear, right? If you take a look at lin lin uh, a neural network, if I create a neural network, let's say a very simple network with a, so suppose, or let me call it W1, a, and let's say, just a simple network like this, forget the activation for the time being. Okay, so what will be the output over here? A, W1 plus B. A, W1 plus B. Yes. If your goal was to determine A and B given some criteria, is this a linear model? Yes. Yes. So you can solve it exactly like we did in the first lecture. Okay. okay. Now suppose we pass it through two neurons. Okay. Uh, so suppose this is W2 over here. Okay. Now take a look. S1 will be A W1 plus B. S2 will be uh, I should draw it over here. Okay, S1 W2 times B plus let's call it B2. Okay. So if I sub now plug in S1, what happens to S2? So second order equation. So this becomes W2 plus B2. So what happens to A plus B1? So is this still linear in terms of our parameters? The model parameters here are W1 and W2. So it's no longer nonlinear. Anytime we have a nonlinear optimization problem, this is a standard fact in math. So nonlinear. optimization problem. Only way you can solve it is iterative. So you cannot solve it like we did for a linear least squares, set up the matrix equation and solve it. So that's the reason uh, for a single neuron, sure, you can do it, but not beyond a single neuron. Even with a single neuron, as soon as you put the activation function, it causes nonlinearity for the weights as well because they are being passed through. Um, in, the fir in the first one, there was, there was y equals a, and in the second one, there's also an a. What, what, what makes that nonlinear? Is it, is it the w1? Uh, if down on the very bottom of the, yeah, that's, there's just a single a there. Uh, so I was oh, wondering what, uh, what makes it nonlinear. So, sorry, I shouldn't, but let me call it x over here. Let's call it x over here so that it's not confusing with this city over here. So x is the input. So it would be x w1 plus v1, right? So what makes it nonlinear is, see, if, you, if we had, let's say, five parameters that we wanted to determine, and if they were all like the final equation is, let's say, loss equal to uh, 0.2 w1 plus uh, whatever, 7w2 plus 12w3 plus so on, right? So as long as these are the unknown parameters, these are what we are trying to optimize our network for, as long as they are appearing without a square or without being multiplied by two unknown parameters, meaning what would make it nonlinear is if we had a square over here. What would make it nonlinear is if we had w1 times w2 over there. So that's what makes it nonlinear. 
So what I'm trying to say is, the reason the linear least squares, which is a very, uh, which is a fantastic technique. In fact, some of you who are in the computer vision will do image alignment using the linear least squares approach, and you'll see it works perfectly. Okay. However, for neural networks, we cannot use it because uh, a anytime we have multiple uh, layers of neurons, it becomes nonlinear in terms of the parameters. As I showed you, they get multiplied over here. Right. B even if you pass it through an activation function like a sigmoid, which is a nonlinear type of function, it makes the parameters also nonlinear. So, anyway, so that was the answer. Okay, so let me show you the code, then I'll give you a small break, and then we'll continue from there. <coughs> 